Hi everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we are late by three minutes. I apologize for that. Just trying to get uh, the system set up over here. Um, we are good to go. I think we have almost 50 odd people who have uh, joined us today. Thank you for joining in. I hope all of you are safe. Uh, and uh, I have uh, Chirantan with me. Um, we are gonna you know, try and take you through. I have some very you know small slides primarily talking about opportunities because I guess that's what you know we are all here for to try and understand what are the opportunities that are there and then we are going to go directly into you know your question and answers um, and uh, we're going to try and, and answer as many questions as possible uh, so my name is Aritro Bhattacharya I'm the senior director here at Talent Sprint I head admissions for all executive programs here and uh, I've had a career of more than a decade primarily around helping professionals make better career choices and better decisions. Uh, before this, I used to head the admissions for um, the Indian School of Business, ISB, their main MBA program, um, as well as I worked for a company called Pearson, which is the largest education um, company in the world. And there I used to, I have had the pleasure of working with uh, almost uh, 30, 35 or Fortune 500 companies, primarily in areas of uh, designing competency management systems, leadership identification, high potential identification, etc. So that's been my passion all my life. So, um, and I'm going to talk to you from that perspective. Um, I am honored to be joined by Chirantan today. He is an alumni of um, our AIML program. Um, Chirantan, um, if you can hear me, uh, can you help us with a small introduction um, about yourself? Sure, sure, Retro. Hey, hi. Um, so, um, good evening, everyone. And uh, this is Chirantan here. And um, I pretty much have been in this industry for roughly about 25 years. And uh, it has been, uh, you know, pretty interesting long journey. So, I'll talk about more uh, when we catch up. But in brief, yeah, in the last 25 years, I've worked across technologies, heading verticals, heading horizontal practices, which is in terms of technology. And, um, you know, both in startups as well as in large, uh, you know, the big four as well as the large consulting companies. So pretty much had the, you know, um, variety of working in all kinds of setup. Um, so I think uh, last year at the same time, I was also uh, walking your shoes in terms of evaluating uh, because every five years I tend to upgrade myself uh, in new areas because that's how this industry is. If I don't upgrade every five years become obsolete, right? So. I mean, uh, tend to do that. And um, I was in the US when I was just coming back. So I was planning to you know, pick up something which is interesting. So one of them was blockchain, the other was AIML. And looking at the you know, immediate opportunities um, and the various pros and cons that I evaluated at that point of time, I zeroed down on uh, the Triple IT's program primarily um, because of several reasons. You know, I'll get into it uh, when we have the next set of uh, Q&A. So that's in brief. Yeah, so I think very excited to, uh, you know, kind of uh, interact with all of you. And, um, you know, feel free to ask all your questions, doubts you have, because I was in the similar shoes a year back. So I'll be happy to share my analysis and, uh, you know, on what basis I picked up and also post the journey, how it was so far. All right, thanks, over thanks. to your intro. Thanks, Chirantan. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, pleasure having you here today. So we have a, I have a very small presentation. It's it's primarily um, talking a little bit about Talent Sprint, um, the genesis of the program and some experience, you know, regarding uh, what we have been able to do uh, with this program. This, in case you don't know, this is one of the older programs in the country when it comes to AIML programs. Uh, we are currently recruiting for the 16th cohort, um, almost three plus years old is is how old this program is and and we started off when um, AIML was just starting to be a big word, buzzword in the country obviously nowhere near uh, you know how prevalent it has become right now so a little bit about talent sprint and that's you know that's something that's changed um, in the last couple of weeks is um, we are now majority owned by the national stock exchange uh, one of their subsidiary companies called NSC academy um, in case you don't know, uh, you know, we, we are a 10 year old company. We, we've had this journey of um, around 10 years now, and uh, we started executive education about three, three and a half years back with the AIML program, incidentally. And um, as of last, 
last week, last Tuesday to be precise, we have been majority bought out by National Stock Exchange through its subsidiary company, National Stock NSC Academy, uh, whereby uh, NSC is, in, I'm sure most of you know, is the largest stock exchange in India. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pioneer in so many ways. It's one of the largest stock exchanges in the world. Um, and for them to own us, majority own us, and, and in the next couple of years, we're going to become a completely part of NSC where they'll have 100% ownership down the line. Um, speaks volumes about uh, you know talent sprint. It adds a lot of credibility to the kind of programs that we run. Uh, and that's something that's, that's happening at, as we speak. We are um, you know, planning to do uh, much bigger things in the future. And this will open up a lot of opportunities for many of our learners as well. Um, but if you really look at what we have been doing, fundamentally, we are going to remain the same. We are going to help uh, you know, the NSC Academy uh, to scale up and, and reach more professionals in various stages of um, their learning journey. Um, what we have been doing for professionals right now is that we have been working with top institutions to provide executive programs. Um, thanks to the fact that the government of India has um, mandated all these top institutions to start looking at executive programs uh, to deliver uh, these programs to you know, a larger audience and not limited to the very limited number of students um, who could participate in um, and to generate their own resources, you have all these top institutions which you could otherwise not get into. Um, um, you know, you would have to. You most of you would have you know crossed the age where you would be getting into the, them. Um, you have these executive programs which you could do. So we work with you know, and and we are in a niche, so to speak, in the sense that uh, we offer market creating products. So like AIML, for example, we started it three years back. We've just started a program um, on um, you know, AI in marketing, so to speak. That's with AI in Calcutta. Again, a program like that does not exist in India before. Uh, we have a first program in digital health and imaging, which is kind of usage of AI, ML, uh, and, and you know, deep learning in the healthcare space. Again, first of its kind program in India, which we run with IISC. So similarly along those lines, so we offer these programs um, for our learners so that you know you could get the benefit of uh, an, an association or a, or a top tier certificate uh, from a top tier institution and uh, and you get to progress in your career, et cetera, et cetera, and have the skills. We also work with a lot of uh, blue chip companies like say Google, uh, Pegasystems Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism in the space of robotic process automation. Uh, these are primarily for the graduate students, not for executives, but uh, so we work across both functions over there. So over the last couple of, over the last three years, we would have um, impacted um, the lives of about four or 5,000, um, you know, uh, working professionals. And in terms of graduate students, it will be somewhere in the range of three, three and a half lakh uh, undergraduate students. So just coming down to the, the, and here, I'm, what I'm going to talk about is just some opportunities. I'm sure most of you would know that, but I thought I would quantify some of the things so that people have, uh, you know, some idea of the scale that things are working at. If you really look at it, uh, investment in AI has been growing. Um, this was an IDC research study which says that you know it's been growing at a CAGR of 40 to 45 uh, percent. The pandemic has probably um, you know, accelerated this. Uh, this was a study, I think it was uh, late last year's study, IDC. Uh, PwC incidentally has come out with um, one of their reports, uh, which says that by 2030, uh, it's expecting AI uh, to contribute around $15.7 trillion um, to the global economy. And uh, that's, that's a large amount, if you really look at that, which also talks about a lot of opportunities that are there. Um, large scale adoption, that's something that's happening. And I have two slides on that uh, and then we'll be done. If you really look at that, just taking that from the PwC study, this is a direct, uh, you know, this is one of the uh, graphics that they looked at. If you really look at it, a lot of the growth is gonna happen in China, et cetera, but uh, developed Asia, that's where India is there, around 0.9 trillion, so almost $900 billion is what, uh, the growth um, or the contribution of AI um, in the economy is projected 
by the year 2030 and that's that's a that's a huge amount of money um you know india by itself is a 2.8 or trillion dollar economy so if you really look at that point 9 trillion to come in the next 10 years by when i mean you know the current government says that they're trying to go to what a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2024 2025 don't know if that will happen or not, but that's still going to be a significant contribution if you really look at that. So from a working professional perspective or somebody who's just coming into the, the job uh, role, many of you will be coming in as well. Many of you would have would have would have wanted to maybe transition. Uh, this is still a very lucrative space and a space with a lot of opportunities um, that you should be a part of. If you're really looking at that, and if you look at these slides, and these are just um, one, two, three, I have eight sectors which I'm covering. If you really look at it from uh, an IT perspective, a majority of the IT clients um, would be a part of these eight odd sectors that are there. Financial services, a majority of the Indian IT workforce, which according to NASCOM is around four, 4.5 million uh, professionals, uh, which is around 45, 50, for yeah, 40 45 lakhs uh, professionals uh, majority of them work actually in financial services uh, now the pwc study here what they are talking about is i i could not reproduce the entire study in the in the slide but it was talking about um, the impact of um, artificial intelligence in specific sectors in the broad sector and then the the sub sectors are given there on the screen for you um, and these were ranked um, in terms of the impact that they will have on a rating of uh, rating scale of one to five. If you look at that, these three broad sectors um, in you know in financial services, which forms the lion's share of you know Indian IT um, companies uh, clients that they have, um, they it had around a three point eight out of five impact in AI. And this so you know professionals who are there currently in IT, in financial services, if you were to pick up a skill in AI, um, you would probably be in a great position um, to leverage that skill because that sector is going to be, um, you know, BFSI in this example is going to have a huge impact. It's, you know, 3.8 out of 5 if you really look at that. So that's that's the kind of the, the average across all of these sectors and retail, technology, communications, et cetera, was in the range of 3.1 out of five. So huge amount of opportunities are there. Now, that's a great thing. That's We all know this, but then there is on the flip side, there's a huge skill gap as well. If you really look at that, uh, this was another study um, I missed who, who the study was. I think it was a part NASCOM or somebody else. Um, only so just about. To, just want to make sure that everybody's able to hear because I see a couple of people saying unable to hear. Um, hey, uh, Dha Dhaval, Ramesh, are you all able to hear? Somebody says screen not visible. Are you all able to follow? Can you just confirm whether you're able to hear? Can you see the screen? Yeah, can you I hear? can see uh, Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think if somebody's still facing an issue, it could be a local Zoom setting. Just yeah, verify that. Be. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. So yeah, we, we still have a huge skill gap when it comes to you know the 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 total the actual skills, the core skills that you need to work uh, in in the sector. So which means that there's still a huge amount of opportunity that's there for you um, to you know exploit. Um, so to speak, and make a career for yourself. This was an ASCOM study done uh, early uh, this year. This was right before the pandemic hit. If you really look at that, we are looking at a shortfall of uh, 1 lakh 40 thousand uh, work for working professionals in uh, AI. So companies need people, they don't find people. And when we say they don't find people, we are talking about people who can actually go ahead and execute projects who can conceptualize at various stages. It's not that, you know, they are only looking at, uh, you know, very senior AI professionals, but it's across the, the skill gap is across uh, seniority in the industry. So, and then globally, you know, Gartner is predicting, this is again, you know, these numbers keep changing, but just, I'm just trying to talk about um, the, the opportunities that are there. Um, we have had almost 2,400 professionals, you know, graduate, and I'm going to bring in Chirantan over here uh, for, um, you know, this part of the presentation that's there. 
So if you look at this, um, we have done this study across a majority of our professionals or of, of the learners that who pass out of our program. What we did is that we, we asked them, what is it that they are looking for in a program? Um, so one is that the first top thing that came out was that the program should be for a professional's needs. Uh, you have many other programs which say that, you know, uh, coding experience is not required, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we are not that, you know, we, we, we want you to come in because as a working professional, uh, we will not be able to teach you coding. This probably if, if, if you want to learn coding, um, and if you want us to teach you coding and then do that, it's it's a long program. It it, it becomes a very long program. This is a six month long program. So we expect you to have those basics. And you know, if you have that basic, you will come in over there. Um, they also need a lot of focus on hands on and group work. That's there. That's also something that's very important. Um, and lab exercises, etc. Um, they need to be very practical oriented things, which is something that is the third thing that came out. And finally, um, peer learning is something that's very important. And, uh, you know, all of you, I'm assuming who are uh, here with work experience, you would understand that uh, if you are learning as a part of a group where, you know, people come from various sectors, where people come with various years of experience, um, doing various functions, etc., you can all learn from each other's experiences. So that's something that's very important. Um, and one thing where um, the uh, AIML program of IIIT and Talent Sprint really, uh, you know, really does very well is the fact that um, the average years of experience for our program is in the range of 7.5 plus years of experience. So a lot of very senior, uh, serious professionals um, they tend to choose our program. Um, and that also speaks a little bit about uh, the DNA of the program. It's it's for it's a serious program. If you really want to pick up skills um, and and you know you you value a peer group, you value serious learning and you are not swayed by uh, you know swanky, swanky ads, etc. Uh, they tend to choose our program. So that's that's the typical audience that's been I'm, I'm just the numbers are there on the screen for you to understand um, profile experience also if you really look at that a majority of them are above uh, above 10 years of experience so chirantan um, you know i'd like to bring you in over here and uh, talk a little bit about um, you know your journey in terms of you know you you said that in your introduction you have been uh, in the sector for almost 20, 25 years now. And uh, why did you decide to get into, you know, what was a little bit about your journey so that we can set the context up and and why did you decide to get into AIML and blockchain? Um, and um, yeah, so what led to that? Sure, sure. Yeah, so I think um, I, I kind of uh, uh, was heading um, um, the BFSI space and from which then after that I moved to HLS, which is, healthcare and life sciences. And, uh, you know, the previous two years I was in the US and I mostly at that point, you know, I've been in leadership roles at that point. So I was also handling the client partner role, uh, you know, working with various CIOs. What was happening is, um, you know, in many of the interactions, you know, though we do the straightforward, which is the BAU business, right? With clients, the CIOs, the CXOs, right. they also had have, has the budget, right? Essentially the budget for uh, innovation, to so driving innovation. Every CIO has that. So you talk about, uh, we're talking of, uh, you know, Citibank, uh, we're talking of JP Morgan Chase, we're talking of AIG, MetLife, you know, some of these in this space, as well as if you look at Philips Healthcare, Thomson Scientific, I'm talking of some of the ones that used to work very closely. And yeah. every CIO has a mandate to kind of show innovation to the board of directors that they report to. Now, everybody would speak about, you know, hey, I want to do something on artificial intelligence, AI, ML, you know, do some deep learning and so on, right? So... What was happening is, you know, they said that, why don't you, and there is no question of any RFP here, because unlike a traditional bidding process, if you really have a very focused solution that you can show them that with the data that they already have in their uh, current structure and show some results, I mean, they're really ready to give you a kind of a project to start off with small and then you can expand on it. So in order to have those meaningful conversations with clients, what I realized that, you know, it was like, you know, without knowing the subject, you know, we would kind of, you know, always depend on the practice sets, the technology folks who are in AML, you know, get to the practice, uh, you know, technical folks who are already kind of educated in that space within the company and then come back. 
So it's always like an online offline discussion. And when you're, you know, having a lunch or a, you know, a dinner with the CIO at point of time, you're not able to immediately respond because of the lack of knowledge. Absolutely. Now that basically creates a showstopper to, you know, give a proposal right at the point when they are hot, right? I mean, when they're asking for it. So, so that became like a handicap. And I realized it was becoming a handicap. And the good thing about, for example, I was evaluating the other side for BFS is blockchain, whereas blockchain was more focused for BFS side. But yeah. AIML is like a big horizontal where you can apply in every industry. Uh, we went after it, whether it's automobile, whether it's healthcare, life sciences, you know, banking, insurance, anything, right? So right. it's a wide, it's a, like a broad spectrum antibiotic. Absolutely. So that was one reason when I zeroed down. Now I thought, let me first focus on the AIML piece because that's more relevant for me. And um, also without having the knowledge, you're like, you know, having, you know, you have an elephant in front of you and you're blind and you're just figuring out, you know, you know, what is it? And you don't even know how to attack the animal in front of you. True. So I think that was a primary reason uh, because I was anyway planning, you know, with my family to move back. And uh, then I started uh, to be honest and I compared all the competitors of Triple IT, Hyderabad, Talent Spring. So I, I did the pros and analysis. When, since I was in the US, I picked up the you know programs that was done by Stanford, by Colonel, by MIT. I mean, damn expensive. You know, though they are like I didn't even want to waste that much of money to be very honest. Number one, number two, I didn't look for a full time program because I was working. Uh, sure. Number three, within India, I evaluated uh, you know the Triple IT Bangalore program where they have a two year long program charging some five lakhs. They give some diploma and a degree from you know uh, one of the UK universities, and I was not very kind of uh, you know inclined. So those, and plus then there was great, uh, I think Great Lakes and there's a bunch of Coursera, Andrew NG, all of that, you know, uh, which I kind of, you know, evaluated. But finally, when I also realized and um, that uh, one was IIIT Hyderabad and I was coming, I was basically in Hyderabad, going to be based in Hyderabad. So mm -hmm. that one, definitely an inclination. And the second thing is, I think um, definitely looking at the Gartner and Forrester reports, which I kind of very closely look at uh, on an ongoing basis. It was very clear that this market is going to keep expanding over the next few years, right? At least next five, 10 years, you pick up this particular skill, you're going to make a reasonable amount of money. So right. I think that basically was the driver for pushing, you know, and getting into it. And I mean, it really needed a lot of hard work because, you know, for unlike for young kids, you know, with less than two years of high experience is easy, but for us, we to push a lot more harder, right? But Absolutely. I think really it was worth the time spent, you know, and meeting up the brilliant professors of IIIT, Professor meeting Professor Ashokan of uh, Talent Spring, you know, being the chief learning officer and the flexibility. And the fantastic, the good thing about the learning was, I think, all the guides who are uh, doing their MS or their PhD at IIIT, and they are like completely hands-on. And, you know, the kind of way they support during the labs, I mean, that was fantastic. And each and every particular lab that I can remember and recollect, I mean, each of them was a very practical situation that you would encounter if you're working even in a company like Google or Facebook for that matter, right? So I think it gets you to that level of uh, capability where you can confidently talk to anybody in the industry as a client. And for example, if you know the people looking for switching jobs, I mean, it gives you a complete confidence to talk at a particular level where you can actually clear potentially an interview. Of course, after you get in, you have to be able to work as well. So for that, you would need to get some experience. So I think um, these were the primary reasons, I would say. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, to everybody there on the call as well, you can send in your questions um, through chat. Uh, if you raise your hands as well, we can. Yeah, try. I think there are some questions already. Arithra. We can go one by one. And if anybody wants to speak, uh, because sometimes, you know, um, the intent is not clearly understood when you type few words. So you can unmute and um, ask your question. Uh, that will, I'm sure, one question, you know, I think it will address a good number of people's, uh, uh, you know, kind of thought process as well when we respond. So I see one anonymous attendee. The question is, uh, will, uh, what was that? Will data science be included in this course along with AIML? So I think, I don't know how you define data science because the moment you're working with any type of data, right? Essentially, whether you're capturing data, whether you're handling data, whether you're, whether you're programmatically, you know, kind of refining the data, all of that, if you look at, you're basically involving in processing the data. So there is complete data science. In machine learning is essentially an advanced way of handling the data where the machines are learning from the input and the output. If you look at uh, in all of your software people, I'm assuming, right? So in software, if you see uh, the typical good old way of handling software, you take the requirements document, you create the requirements document, write the use cases. So there's an input and you basically know that the customer has this problem which has to be automated and hence the software has to be designed so that you get a particular output, right? That is your traditional method of software uh, programming. Now in machine learning, it's exactly the opposite, 
right? In machine learning, you're basically taking all the data that is available in the organization, all the inputs and the outputs. Now you take the input and output, and then you train the machine, right? You train the machine based on the algorithm. So there's a lot of mathematics and statistics involved. Not to get scared, it's all at the level of your class 11 and 12, which we tend not to remember, or we would have studied but not appreciated it. In fact, when you do machine learning, when you learn the mathematics and statistics and revise that of 11 and 12, you'll realize, I mean, basics of like linear algebra, matrices, differential equations, how important they were. We, we never understood why the hell were we studying it in 11 and 12. But when you do machine learning, you exactly understand, oh, this is where I apply these uh, mathematical topics, right? So if all of you have a notebook and a pen handy, uh, feel free to keep it handy. I'll, I'll talk about a few important things. Um, you can note it down because that will help you towards making sure that you have made some kind of a preparation uh, for uh, you know getting ready for the program, right? So feel free. Um, can you repeat the mathematics? Okay, let me do one thing. Let me go one by one. So the question is data science. Okay, this is not about, you know, for example, uh, data science is a huge, vast area. Remember that. So this is a specific area which is handling um, AI ML, which is artificial intelligence, machine learning. Also, the third, fourth module focuses on uh, neural networks, deep learning, right? And then you also will get access or understanding of tools at a high level. After that, you have to kind of specialize yourself, which is on like TensorFlow, Keras. You know, all these are not mentioned in the curriculum, but they get covered when the uh, professors teach. And the professors are from triple it you know they've studied all over the world in the best universities in the us and some of the best papers that they publish as well as you will have industry practitioners like we had different people from you know the startups who were doing data visualization a fantastic one um, you know and then we had people from data scientists from microsoft so you will have a lot of people who are actual practitioners from the industry also will come and teach you so that's um, you know something which you will get a great exposure towards um, is this useful for mechanical engineering candidate? So let me keep answering one by one, right? So I just answered this. And then, um, so in the last, uh, I think three or four weeks, um, I think I spoke to close to about maybe seven, eight uh, mechanical engineers. All of them had done mechanical engineering. See what's happening in the mechanical space is, uh, you know, the jobs are getting automated, right? So obviously the number of jobs are reducing, right? Because there's bots taking over if it's a software related or there are robots actually taking over. So that will be con that will continue to be the trend. And hence, if you're a mechanical engineer who has actually done a four years of mechanical study, and after that, if you learn, you know, things like RPA as well as, you know, AIML, after maybe a couple of years, once you specialize, you actually will have an edge to apply for a lot of jobs uh, which don't uh, kind of, you know, exist today maybe because they will look at people who know mechanical engineering handling the various mechanical equations pieces. It could be space side. It could be on, you know, the robot side um, and you can apply AIML, right? You need to have some understanding of programming, mathematics, mathematics and statistics, and then take it forward to do the modeling and, you know, come up with solutions. So remember, it's easy for a mechanical engineer to learn, say, Python and AIML and go to the industry with a higher level of capability as compared to teach a computer science or a data scientist mechanical engineering and then take him to a mechanical job, right? So if you're in the mechanical industry, for example, Tesla is coming next year to India, right? So you see this driverless, um, you know, automation happening for driverless cars. So you will see the number of kind of use cases that are going to increase. There is a lot of, look at the space industry, it's kind of going to boom. Very soon it'll start booming even more in India with the kind of mission that uh, Narendra Modi is personally also trying to push towards, right? So there would be new jobs that will come up, but you know, I think, but the folks who start investing today, possibly you'll get the returns over the next two to five years if you can, you know, stay invested in this. So one minute, let me just try to cover. What's this uh, question? This is from Dhawal. So I'm from telecom domain, ran part of the base, basically uh, doing quality, okay? Uh, making sure the quality of the network. And I'm curious to understand where and how can I apply AI in the uh, mechanic? Okay, in the uh, telecom domain. So uh, I think that will it, it, it basically, if you look at in the telecom sector, see OSS, BSS, I mean, this is obviously, you know, a huge amount of application which is there. On the RAN side, for example, you're talking of you're into the quality of the network itself. See, quality of network, I mean, if you look at even today, if you look at that, um, Airtel app, for example, gives you an option. Wherever you have a problem, whether it's a data or voice, it asks you to select your location and report the data. What essentially any telco is doing today, they're just trying to make sure that they're capturing the current 
time, timestamp, and at the timestamp, the customer is in which location with what kind of an issue, right? And then they're starting, they, then they run the test reports and they apply a lot of algorithms, which is internally all machine learning in order to figure out. First, they figure out the problem itself. Where is the problem? Because if you see that there's Wi-Fi calling today, you don't even have to, you know, pick up a tower. Good old days, you know, everything was a dependency on the uh, GSM towers. So there is huge number of use cases. You would just possibly, you know, go to Google and find out. I am not, I have been out of the telecom domain for almost seven, eight years. I used to work with British Telecom, AT&T and Vodafone, some of the projects, uh, but off late I've not been, but I know there's a lot of innovation happening. And there is a lot of, you know, AML, uh, you know, use cases that are also in the telecom domain. So feel free. I think you should just check what specifically can you apply. But yes, I think that wherever there is data, wherever there is data that is not studied, whichever is not kind of, you know, taken to the level of um, forecasting or prediction. I mean, that's where I think you have an opportunity ahead of you. Um, let me. Uh, so I answered, I think, is this useful for mechanical engineering candidate? I think I've answered that. Um, then we have, uh, when we have free resources to learn machine learning, why do we have to, very good question, exactly. So I think I was, I, not only I, you, I had about 170 people in our batch, okay, and all of us uh, tried out all the free courses and as well as some paid courses like, you know, you have those offers, 15,000 rupees course or Udemy course for 550 rupees, all of us bought all of that, many of them. Um, you know, and then after that, um, you know, you, Andrew NG is there, there are free YouTube videos. Even if you go and subscribe to Talent Spring today, you will see a lot of free videos are there, right? And I think you should uh, go and at least pick up the Python uh, programming uh, videos, which are there from Professor Ashokan, as well as some of the other, you know, um, uh, the folks who teach Python. So just try to go through those videos. Now, to answer your question, a lot of... Uh, um, you know, discipline is what is required. I think one is discipline. Second is the rigor and handholding by somebody who's competent, right? So what happens is you try this out for the next two weeks, uh, pick out, uh, take your Andrew NG or anybody's video and, you know, just subscribe to a Coursera online program and try going through it. Right. I mean, um, you will get to a particular point, but there is um, a very 90% chance of start falling out because you get bored after a point you realize, Hey, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. You know, what's the big deal? I've paid for it or it's free. I'll do it tomorrow. The tomorrow never comes, right? It, I mean, two years passes off, tomorrow will never come. So in the process, um, you will see that you and another person who gets maybe enrolled in a structured program, um, after two years, where that person would be and where you would be, right? You can try this as a you know, test. Now, um, I think the same question all of us had asked, right? Should we do a, you know, kind of this kind of a program when everything is possibly available free today? So um, in our batch, we were in AIML 12. We had about roughly 170 people round about, okay? And you name a company, I mean, pretty much everybody was there, you know, starting off from whether it's Accenture, Cognizant, TCS, Microsoft, Google, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, I mean, a bunch of other companies. There are people who took sabbatical. Uh, they came back from, uh, you know, they came from Singapore. They came from Dubai to do this program, right? Whereas they could have actually, you know, sat there in their own country, uh, without losing four or five months of salary, right? Which is in foreign currency, yet they decided to come into this particular program. So definitely, you know, everybody evaluated the pros and cons of the program before they decided to go for it. And uh, second thing is, I think it's the alumni. Uh, you basically meet a peer group, like here itself, when you meet people, you will see a lot of people are from, you know, some of the best companies and working in different, uh, you know, um, domains. So you have a fantastic peer group. And 70% of the peer group, the push from the peer group helps you learn. It's like going back to college, right? The amount of learning you had during college, you accept or not, how much of our RBTs, role-based trainings your company does for one week and whatever, it's a very different ballgame. <coughs> college learning, I would say, there is no substitute because of the rigor, uh, the continuous um, focus on exams. Um, so in this program, you know, what I heard in our case, it was a four month program and we roughly paid about two and a half lakhs. I heard that right now it's about uh, uh, six month program based on the six month program. Yeah. Feedback, based on the feedback, it's a six month program. So you have two months more time. And I think also there's some scholarships that are being given. Yes. So I think um, it's, it's a fantastic one. And then after we all passed out, you know, we all um, got the triple ID certificate and we become an alumni of triple ID, which is a lifelong uh, triple ID kind of a, you know, alumni status. You have an email ID from uh, triple ID. Then you can engage with your peer group. There are a lot of people who wanted to know that after doing this, if they want to pursue a MS, MTech or a, a PhD from Triple ID Hyderabad, do they get any credit? 
there is if you see the website they do say that they give a credit for this particular program right people who want to pursue that so those are your other advantages um so and uh, the other thing is triple it is definitely worldwide you, you're getting a certificate from a pretty uh, renowned institution right so that is another big plus point that you have and i think the interactions the interactions that you have at a one on one level with the professors with the guides and then when you're stuck right you kind of have the peer group working together if they can't solve it they'll ask the guide and if still that doesn't get solved you have the professor so that ecosystem and the rigor in which you're basically going going through the learning process i think is really a very balanced uh, push for you to complete the program and uh, this is a very competitive program as well so you have uh, um, you know every saturday sunday you have to make sure you commit to it and um, you know for 6 months and then uh, you know you have a beautiful grading system uh, a self evaluation which is every day before you sit for your uh, daily class uh, there's a preparation material given to you the previous week so you go through the preparation material then some there's something called cfp check for preparation so you basically evaluate whether you kind of prepared well enough and after the days lecture you basically go and uh, you know answer um, the quiz or the questions that are asked after the professor's class so that's called check for understanding and then there are uh, mini hackathons every week and there is a major hackathon every four weeks which is every month so all of you will be part of a project team so you will typically have depending on the size of the batch something between four to seven people in each uh, batch so um uh, and not everybody is going to be the same profile right somebody could be a hardcore programmer with two years experience or one year experience somebody could be a ceo with 25 years experience or a vice president with 20 years experience somebody is totally from project management ba has no clue about python programming is not even interested in python programming some people are hardcore techies they just want to master python programming you know they want to just translate all the mathematical algorithm code so it's a beautiful mix of people so when you when the project teams teams are getting created it's a beautiful balance where you know all of you and we used to have in our batch after office we used to have a discipline scrum call between the team members so we had about 6 uh, 7 people 6 people and every night after dinner between 9 and 10 or 10 to 11 depending on you know office conflicts all of us would get on a daily call to discuss what is the problem statement for the mini hackathon or the hackathon what is the approach we should take you know do the analysis do the design structure the solution properly and then attack the problem right so i mean this is basically a typical how you do work on projects in your um, in your respective companies the same way you will do this uh, as well as you will have the same uh, mindset of going back to a good college and you know do the program in a structured way yeah uh, chirantan there's one question from charchita saying and i want to take that up she asks that this is going to be an online program so how effective will it be since it's not a classroom interaction or orientation uh, nor can we go to the lab so incidentally yeah chirantan was a part of the program where uh, you know it was still um, classroom based so to speak but thanks to the pandemic we all learned to you know live and work online now what has changed here is from the time that you know uh, the previous batches to the batch which is now currently online one thing is that this is an interactive live online class so you actually get to talk you can interrupt the faculty just like you would be able to do in a class ask your question um study groups can be formed live and you guys can move on into a live uh, breakout room and work the faculty can come in um, at any point in time he or she chooses the labs are completely online and these are live mentored labs instead of the physical labs that are coming in um so it's it's not a very different environment uh, than in a classroom uh you get to see the whiteboard of the faculty just like you know notes can be shared so all of that is actually live classes so we have been able to simulate the entire live classroom environment and one other tidbit that i'll put in is that uh, we conduct a net promoter score uh, which is which is kind of a proxy for you can say that it's it's customer satisfaction or student satisfaction score um that's a proxy um from the cohorts which have gone online uh, which started off sometime with the cohort which started off in march the net promoter score has actually gone up for the cohorts which moved online so in terms of a learning experience there has been uh, no dip in terms of uh, the ability of people to interact with each other and learn um so that's something that i would like to put in and that's it's pri primarily because unlike you know other online programs which i understand that a lot of people would become you know uh, would be comparing this to other online programs most of those programs have pre recorded videos etc and they are not live in the true sense of the word 
Um, so this is an actually a live class where everybody is live interacting with each other. Uh, the platform allows us to do that. And this is a very robust platform. Incidentally, the same platform is being used by IIM Calcutta to run its main two-year MBA program right now as we speak. It's being used by IIT Jammu to run its engineering program. Um, so, so you look at that, if an IIT is able to use it and all the other, you know, IIT, the executive programs that we run, IIM Calcutta executive programs that they run with us is run using the same platform. And these are completely, these have always been online programs. Um, the main MBA right now was obviously a classroom program, but it's come online thanks to that. So if these, you know, top institutions are using the same platform to deliver this, um, I would, you would not find that there is too much of a difference between that, uh, you know, the, the classroom experience versus what you're doing right now. So that's something that's there. Also, there's been one change. I see a lot of questions are there in terms of placements, etc. cetera. Um, two changes have happened right now. What we are doing is that, um, which was, which we are starting from um, the cohort 16 that we are going to be starting, that's going to start its classes. Um, late December, early January, is the fact that you are now what we have is a career accelerator. It's uh, it's a combination of it's it's something that will help you um, you know make the best use of all the opportunities. We'll have curated job postings that are available uh, to you as a part of doing this program. We'll help you out with your professional profile, you know, interview prep, all of that uh, resume and stuff like that and you get job postings uh, that come in whenever they're available so we work with around you know 700 corporates as a part of the network so that's something that's there you can find the information about that on the website uh, if you really look at it uh, people ask whether it's a guaranteed placement or not see one thing is that it doesn't matter even if there is a guaranteed placement right if you pick up the skills you will probably not need to worry about a guaranteed placement and even if you uh, you know, even if there is a guaranteed placement and you don't have the skills, you'll probably not be able to hold on to the job for very long. So you should focus on building the skill up. And that's something that I've been, you know, telling people across the more than decade of, you know, advising professionals is that, you know, pick up the skill part. If you have the skill, the job will follow you instead of, you know, you running after a job. So concentrate on that. But yes, right now with the career accelerator in place, we do have, um, enhanced opportunities for you to land that job you uh, you know the alumni network that's there that chirantan has been talking about is now spread across the entire spectrum of uh, talent sprint programs so we have um, uh, an alumni network there's a portal there's a separate portal so you can basically interact with all of our program alumni which means you can talk to somebody who has done an im calcutta fintech program you can talk to somebody who's in uh, digital help from IISC or from the data science program that we are running with IISC to a cybersecurity program, which just increases your opportunities to connect with people. All of these are very senior professionals. They post a lot of jobs on the portal. So all of this is coming in together and we've kind of formalized this. This is a new change that has happened, which was not available before which gives you a lot of opportunities. So this is in answer to all the questions who are, uh, you know, where it's the placement guarantee, job, et cetera, et cetera. There isn't a placement guarantee because we we don't, I mean, you know, we've had batches where Chirantan in his batch, there was nothing of this sort which used to happen, but they have all done it, et cetera. So now we are putting in some additional resources. If you pick up the skill, you will be able to land uh, you know, any job or be able to switch, um, you know, and, and companies have, you know, being able to switch to a career, et cetera. There are other prerequisites there that are there as well. Uh, you don't land a job just because you have a degree from someplace. You may have a degree from Harvard, so to speak, or a certificate from it. If you don't have the skills, you will probably not be able to crack it. So that's, uh, you know, that's a couple of um, answers that are there. How many hours of weekend classes and how many hours of effort on a weekly basis uh, for that? Uh, Chirantan, uh, at your at your time, I think you had what three hours of classes on a Saturday and then the entire lab sessions. Um, that's right, right? Yeah, so I think uh, it, it did vary from module to module. And in yeah. our case, actually, we also had the last module that was online. The first Correct. few, uh, the first three were um, in, in classroom. So I think um, typically your uh, Saturdays are classroom and Sundays would be your hands-on project where you'll be yeah. having, you know, development of the mini hackathon hackathon. 
and on uh, saturdays there are times where you could have a first half second half uh, uh, full day class but in between you'll be working on your exercises there are exercises that will be given which you need to solve um and uh, sometimes it could also be like the first half is uh, class uh, class from the professor and the second half could be you know exercises that you work on and there's a lot of uh, scope for you know like uh, if you're falling short of the learning then you can always revise because um you know i think after every module they catch up with the next professor when he picks up the next topic he starts with the revision and you know a different professor would give a different perspective or a spin for the same topic that we learned earlier so that's a good reinforcement and i think uh, dhawal has a question about um, yeah. i've done this curriculum i've gone through the curriculum extensive concern is 6 month enough well the same curriculum we did for 4 months so if we were able to do 4 months all of us working full time right on very intensive projects so yes if you if you have a disciplined uh, plan you have to of course you have to sacrifice your 6 months of vacations and saturday sundays you have to commit so that definitely it will need some kind of a commitment from yourself and if you do that then i think there's no reason why you can't do it all right so um uh, one question is santosh i'm working as a lecturer i'm interested in data science is it possible i think if you're a lecturer depending on whichever area you know you specialize this is just going to add an edge by the way i just i also tend uh, you know i do take classes i'm a, i'm a uh, faculty i i take classes at imt that's more on the management side so at imt ghaziabad the shamshabad campus is a huge campus so i take uh, more on the management side and uh, when you pick up any new topic and new skill it's going to add up to your uh, career so if you are a professor or a lecturer i think if you add up aiml to it there's a very high likelihood that you know the dean or the uh, university chancellor whomever you interact with the head of the departments are going to look at you for taking these new classes which you have learned on aiml on your own uh, so i think definitely you'll end up uh, getting better recognition more opportunities and at the same time once you specialize see um, any subject after you learn it takes a while for it to sink into your head don't think that after 6 months once you complete get the certificate you will become a master no once you learn the subject you have to practice that right it's like a typical experience all of you who have gone through the experience you can imagine what level of knowledge you had in the, your respective engineering after passing out from the college as yeah. compared to after you finish say working 3 to 5 years in the industry same thing will happen here um you will continue to mature with the level of knowledge that you gain in 6 months post that uh, as much amount of exposure that you go through you keep upgrading your skill but then you will be able to talk the same language you know i give this example uh, today possibly you can't even talk to with its clients or with your internal team members or your uh, projects which are working on aiml uh, because you don't have that aiml terminology understanding or python programming for that matter but the moment you pick up this you can start communicating with a larger audience Uh, who understand this language like for example you if you land in france or germany you better know the lo local language right so tomorrow if you have to work on a project which is on aiml this is a prerequisite right for your uh, yourself to get upgraded only when you have upgraded yourself you are eligible to even go to your current resource manager in your current company if they have a aiml practice saying that hey this is my new skill i'm capable competent from AI, on aiml and i have a certificate from triple it would you like to consider and put me into a project right so ask them to put you in a project i saw some questions around uh, uh, sinant and just yeah. uh, yeah. second in terms of this question for the gentleman who uh, wrote a uh, gentleman or lady who's working as a lecturer in case you're interested in a pure data science program uh, we have launched a data science program with iisc bangalore um uh, that's a 10 month long program so in any if any of you are interested in only a data science program you can look up that program as well so that's that's one change that's also happened it's we are going to launch the first cohort for the data science program in the month of uh, january um uh, and uh, yeah so that's going to be with iisc though sorry chirantan go on yes so i think uh, one question was uh, what are the prerequisites for this course so i would say you know for doing like many of us uh, we didn't have time to prepare and go we just landed up for the course and we just caught up right it was just a catch up game uh, but uh, what i would say when i look back is um, if all of you many of you may not have a pr uh, programming background but it doesn't matter uh, because after i did the program first thing i did is i told my daughter who's in grade 6 to start writing python code and today she writes better code even than me so i think that's a good plus point right you just need to be a student willing to learn so even a class 10 i mean sorry a class 6 uh, who is somebody's like 10 year old can pick up python because it's very english like very simple so i think all of you should spend some time bookmark the youtube site of talent spring and uh, uh, just uh, go through the videos 
and there are a bunch of other you know python courses um you know just i'll just give you some of the points which you can note down uh, python.org and there's a whole documentation of python.org remember python mathematics statistics are huge subjects by itself you don't need to look at everything just focus on the one that is required for ai ml so for example again i'm repeating somebody asked me to repeat so what is it that you need mathematics uh, for ai ml you need linear algebra you need say differential calculus differential equations uh, matrices you know at a high level just ask google you'll get all the answers right what is the mathematics required for ai ml statistics simple concepts of mean median mode when you have to do linear classifier you come up with different algorithms right basic mathematics uh, so you have to enjoy you know doing some part of those uh, you know mathematics revision of your class 11 and 12 um many of you have asked questions i am a db i am a qa so i think uh, for a person who is a qa in a top uh, company it company remember every company is going to have aml projects today if you are a big company you will definitely keep landing aml projects if you are certified in aml the kind of testing that is required for aml is very different right so i think essentially if you look at the the level of uh, um testing that needs to be done for a traditional software that gets developed versus a aml are different the approach is different so you will be capable number one to to start working on projects which are in aml either testing uh, second you could also take the route of becoming a ba okay <clears throat> you can if you are good in a domain particular domain that you are working on you can even become a business analyst and apply your aml knowledge to even do requirements you know what kind of requirements are required to be captured for developing of uh, aml algorithms so that is the other plus point um ramjis is any other skill required i think as i said python mathematics mathematics for aml and statistics for aml and uh, skills what is that uh, required for interview for 12 years experience guy now we are going to cover that as a part of the career accelerator okay perfect so even with the, if you're a dba you're handling data it doesn't matter because you're going to be switching into a different uh, career route how are we doing on time aritra because a lot of questions just want to make sure we are going to spend uh, another 5 to 7 more minutes in trying yeah. to answer questions i just want to make sure that i cover uh, most of the questions that have come up and uh, when is the course commencement uh, and timing that i think aritra you i think it's in december right it's uh, in december uh, early january yeah so few seats are left go and grab them because i'll tell you what uh, you know when i was thinking about it is uh, um you know um just think about this all of you if you had to today invest say 2.5 lakhs and that's what i calculated in a fixed deposit it doesn't double in today's interest rate in 10 years also right on top of it there is a 30% income tax that gets deducted <laughs> i decided that okay if i put this 2.5 lakhs in my own career right can i make forget my annual increments and my promotions that will happen in the next 3 to 5 years on top of that can i double this by investing 2.5 can i in 3 years earn 7.5 or 10 lakhs if i have done that my job is done right my investment from this program is taken care of plus i have a like a rotary lion club membership i have got a triple it membership it's a elite membership lifelong i have got a alumni status with a complete peer group we have whatsapp groups you know people from google responding to many questions from microsoft you know jp morgan everybody is posting hey there is so many jobs in this particular group company you know want to apply and then many people are running their own companies right many of us are running our own companies we are tapping into the junior resources who are less experienced and to help us on projects so it's like a, you will see a complete different aperture uh, opening up so you should try to take advantage of that and learn to network because it's a network that's going to take you a long way absolutely uh, chiran to just one yeah. thing here um, you know reverse inflation is working you had paid 2.5 lakhs currently you can come into the program with all of these scholarships that are there at probably around 1.7 plus gst Wow. So that's so that to 6 months. Yeah, so it's more value for money. Yeah, okay. it's it become more value for money. There is a career accelerator which was not there. So unlike other programs where things are becoming more costlier, here it's actually come down and more value is being added. So right, this is right. a great time for you to actually look at the program like this. So somebody yeah. was asking a question about uh, scholarships. Yes, there are specific scholarships for women if you look at the chat window. uh you have um, yochna and vinodini's numbers uh, coming in over there have a call with them uh, they will be able to help you out and understand you know about the requirements for the applications so i'll just quickly touch upon some of the answers how do i move yeah. to ai because current responsibilities are not that obviously because you're in a current different skill set with the current you know uh, kind of job you're doing only when you acquire the aml knowledge you will be eligible to apply for jobs both internally within your company 
as well as outside, right? I mean, today look at just all of your research, right? Look at the um, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Monster, Dice, uh, Nokri. Look at the number of jobs at your level. You will see a wide number of jobs are getting posted, right? You are not eligible to apply today. But if you take the program by February, March, I'm sure in three months, you'll have the confidence to update your resume and start applying and start giving interviews. So that maybe by about next year, this time, you all will possibly be changing your career. Now, um, Zahir said, compared to doing an MSN course uh, related to AI on data science, how good choice is the course at IIIT Hyderabad? It depends on you. If you can invest yeah. two years full time in an MS program, right? And, uh, you know, from a top university, uh, which gives you a guarantee of a placement, right? And evaluate the pros and cons. I mean, nothing's stopping you. If you're not working now, if you're looking for doing an MS for two years, it's up to you, right? I mean, yeah. uh, you have to evaluate and check it out, but check out the price point and the value for money. In all probability, whatever a typical ms program uh, covers or m tech program covers you will see most of that syllabus is compressed and in ms you will have theoretical professors alone teaching you whereas in this program you will have got industry practitioners who will come and teach you on what exact projects are they working on right so that is a different experience of learning from the industry practitioners so it's a combination of both uh, by the way i have been just looking at all the questions and answering in the q a window i have not gone to the chat window just so that all of you know, I have not read any of the questions in the chat window. So I've just been, you know, covering the ones that were appearing in the question answer window. Yes. I'm perfectly fine to extend this, uh, you know, the call so that everybody can take benefit. I'm we'll take some, uh, we'll take five more minutes uh, in the interest of uh, the sure. questions. I've also opened up a poll in case you uh, would want to give some feedback. Um, we are happy to get that feedback as well to all the participants. Sure. So I think if any of you have a question that is not answered, right, please feel free to post it again. Um, preferably in the Q&A box, then I can answer that. Okay, so post that question. If it's not answered, I'll be happy to answer that question. But, uh, you know, I think, yes, uh, all of you do your homework, um, as I said, and uh, make sure that you kind of uh, commit your time uh, for the six month period. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a great investment. Um, as long as you make sure that you have the um, you know, kind of, um, uh, you need to have your vision because I think all of you need to, as Arithu said, Talent Spring might provide opportunities where companies are coming in, but you need to suppose you're a DBA, you are a techie, you are a BA, project manager, program manager, vice president at a leadership role. You need to have your clear vision, how you want to monetize the skill. It has to be your vision because once you have your vision clear, you can easily materialize that vision, but it has to be clear from your side on what you want to actually do because uh, opportunities will always will keep coming. Okay, any other questions? You can unmute and ask if you want to. Yes. Which language you want to be working on? Answer is Python. In this case, you'll be working on Python. Uh, Tabrez, uh, what is the cost of this? It is already being covered. I think 2.5 lakhs for four months has gone down to as a special offer for 1.75 plus GST for six months. Yeah, it's 1.7 plus GST, right? Now. Right. What is the cutoff date to register for this program? Maybe it's today. I don't know. Arithu can answer. <laughs> no, you, we, we'll, uh, we'll have, uh, there's a early bird that's closing. I believe it's closing today or tomorrow. You can look at that. And then, <coughs> you know, in a couple of uh, days, probably in a week, week and a half, we're going to try and close the uh, batch. Okay. And uh, what interviewer will check for the resume for fresher? Okay. Experience. All right. For a fresher or experience? Uh, the question is not very clear. What interview will check for a resume as a fresher or experience? Maybe you should read. Frame. Let me try to answer what I understood. Uh, if an interviewer has to um, look at a resume, first of all, if a person is hiring for AIML and if they see that, oh, this person has done an AIML program from IIIT, that gives a lot of confidence. If I'm an interviewer, it gives a lot of confidence that IIIT is a respectable institute. It's not like a fly-by-night operator, right? It's not a course or a program or a Udemy program. Somebody did it sitting with their friend. They would have done the papers and got a score. All that nonsense doesn't happen, right? So they will get a lot more weightage for a triple ID certificate, number one. Number two, um, if you're a fresher, whatever stream you are, whether it's mechanical, electrical, electronics, computer science, the probability if you get an AIML certification from triple ID to, to get calls as a fresher, and get a little more higher salary compared to a typical BTEC computer science is always going to be higher. So I think I, I always tell this, if, if you're a fresher, I mean, it's a great opportunity to start your career with AIML because 
you're completely getting into an area instead of a typical you get hired with Infosys, TCS and get into a production support project and keep on getting 3.5 lakhs, 3.75 and then suddenly you'll have a you know you'll have a pay cut you will have a flat you won't get promotions for next three four years with the recession going on you know so instead of that if you do aiml you'll be working on more high-end projects so that's what i would say for qa you mentioned the career path uh, yes as a it's a potential uh, so ketan it is your way to how you sell yourself if you're a qa you already are a domain expert you understand testing you understand the software industry now if you really pick up um, uh, AIML as a complete understanding of mathematics, algorithms, Python programming, right? Then you can become a white box tester for AIML algorithms as well, number one. Number two, if you are a good specialist in a particular domain, then you can definitely become a BA because you have an opportunity to work with the clients. But again, you have to sell yourself in the interview, either internally within your company or externally. In my career, I've seen some of the best BAs have been those who got converted from a QA job. They were QA leads or, you know, good QA engineers. We took them as a BA role. They went through the grind, you know, and of course we did, we do a lot of uh, BAs who come from IIM hiring, ISB hiring all, all the time. But I think some of the real good QAs also, um, BAs come from the QA track as well. So it is all up to you how you want to leverage your, uh, you know, knowledge and play as a, it's like a cross, um, you know, role. You have to change away your, and cross your role. I've done the MTech from NIT. Uh, 14 years experience IT. Yes. So I think I saw your question earlier. I was about to answer Lakshman uh, Parela. So L Lakshman, um, you just look at the Triple IT website. Uh, if you've done your M Tech and there's a score, Triple uh, uh, IT has. I think they have their internal uh, examination or they have the All India exam for PhD, right? So you have to have that. You know, you have to uh, get shortlisted. It's a competitive exam. There are limited seats. So if you want to do a PhD, depending on which area of your M Tech you've done. Because if you have not done MTech in say um, high-end, um, you know, image processing or you know, um, computer vision or you know, any of those, um, you may not be eligible for a PhD directly from Triple IT immediately. But the AML program will basically bridge that gap. So um, to answer, you you will be eligible, but you have to figure out what is the eligibility criteria from the Triple IT website. Okay. One important thing I want to answer: um, what kind of projects that we did? I think it'll be very useful for you to know. Um, so first month we did a lot of NLP, natural language processing, which is, you know, bag of words. You have a complete, uh, you know, book or a comprehension. You have to figure out, you know, this speech was from which president, for example, right? So that's basically natural language processing. Um, then sentiment analysis. Then after that, we did pro projects, which is on voice recognition. So there's like, say, call center data, right? You've got a lot of data from call centers. How is the, you know, temperament of the person who basically is handling that particular call? So is the is the customer upset? And then yes, no answers in what tone, right? Upset or what, what way? So you can do a lot of machine language analysis, Fourier analysis uh, using the voice data. Then second, we build chatbots, right? Chatbot is very important. It's become a part of the standard process in every industry. So you will learn how to use and make a chatbot. How do you train the bot? You know, how do you train it? That is one. Second is computer vision. So we had, we made an app where in the app, you basically would um, unlock your mobile phone using your image. So you would, you, you would create your own algorithms and train the uh, machine uh, to detect your face. So if your face is uh, somebody else is there, a friend of yours, it will not unlock. So, and then the other was expression. For example, am I a sad, showing a sad face or a smiley face? It will detect the expressions as well. So those were all the kind of projects we did. And it was very interesting. You know, some things that people in Facebook and Google end up doing. Hamid here, 17 is experience in oil and gas industry, automation background, ERP solutions. Perfect. Can I be eligible to qualify data science course? I have 14 years industrial experience. So the answer, um, Hamid, is yes. I think, see, everybody, all of you are eligible. I think what you should think is, think about that you're getting fresh in this industry of AIML. So yep. whatever you've done is a bonus. It is already your past experience that is existing. That is an added advantage because after learning AIML, you will see today you don't even know how to use the data in your, for example, process automation that you're talking about. The ERP has a lot of data. Today, you don't even know how to use the data um, and provide a recommendation, a prediction, right? Uh, for example, you know, the kind of, uh, the what is the impact of coronavirus pandemic on your production of your oil and natural gas? Can you predict that, right? Looking at the trend of last one year, maybe yes, okay? But today, um, you as a professional who's only into um, oil and natural gas may not be able to predict it. But the moment you have your AML knowledge, you will suddenly realize that, hey, I have so much of uh, data in hand 
and like everybody says right data is the new uh, you know kind of oil and uh, you end up using that to to kind of restructure the input output and you know train a machine and come up with new algorithms that will give you output about the same you know potential areas where nobody even thought about how to monetize that particular data so it all depends on which area you want to whether it's in production whether it's in distribution it all depends on which area you are thinking so the question is yes there is second is see um, the traditional jobs are being cut as you see like the simple point would be more and more jobs are getting cut over time so if you really want to be relevant and even this investment will likely will not go away because once you have the six months of learning on top of it you can keep on building say you're building up a one floor house and you have a plan to create a five floor house until you create the one floor of your aiml you can't think of doing say specialization in neural networks right getting into the next level of advanced uh, you know um, uh, um, uh, say deep learning those all you can keep doing only when you've picked up like for example how do you want to use keras and tensorflow there are separate programs which you can just sign up and once you know aiml internals like when you do automobile engineering you're taught how to design a, a a pin inside a carburetor but when you actually join a company you don't bother to do that you take it for granted similarly what you learn here is under the hood and tomorrow with this knowledge you can yourself keep learning the advanced topics over time absolutely uh, panita rao i don't know programming from which program uh, should i start i'm very interested in this program so vanita you should start with python and that's like english very much like english so as i said you can sign up for uh, the youtube video um, you know videos which are there from talent spring and uh, go through them that's a fantastic starting point and uh, you know python.org and you need to just sign up you go to google with your gmail id google collab so that is your id for writing the python program on the cloud and that's it's what you need and uh, for mathematics concepts all of you can note down this uh, it's called 3b 1b uh, it's a youtube channel it's a very very popular channel okay so uh, for all kinds of different types of mathematical concepts they have simplified the entire learning so just just go through the youtube channel and you will see that um, you will get a bunch of uh, videos on uh, 3b 1b okay so just subscribe to the channel is 3 uh, blue one brown 3 blue one brown right okay so time so check subscribe to that time check we are at 640 probably one more question and then we'll wrap it up you also have yochna and vinodini's contact numbers uh, which are there on the chat they are um, you know part of the team that uh, you know recruits for this program you can get in touch with them so last one question chirantan whatever you want to choose yeah i think i have covered the ones that were in the q and a um, i i kind of uh, hopefully i covered everything there i don't think anything is left out is there anything in the chat window that did not properly get answered no i don't think we kind of i'm going through that uh, yeah i think we have answered most of the question oil and gas many of them actually repeated that so i think yeah we we done uh, with most of the questions in case you have any more questions you know feel free to reach out to yochna vinodini uh, with your query we're sorry we couldn't answer in the interest of time you know we thought that we were going to wrap it up here we're already 10 minutes past uh, the time uh, thank you again uh, chirantan for a, a very you know interesting session it's so great to see you know your energy as always uh, and your willingness to answer all of the questions uh, yeah. and to and to just i think two questions naga has asked working as aws cloud engineer um and with some experience you can definitely uh, uh, you know leverage aiml uh, definitely anybody is working on cloud has a huge opportunity with aiml it's an add on uh, shashi kumar asked that uh, i have reached or i am research i am the research field for last 20 years is it useful for my career in the corporate field first of all i think it will be definitely very useful in the research field itself number one number two if you plan to kind of fields also kind of contribute towards the academic side yes and corporate field depends if you're working with the industry and if you have any contacts or if you apply so if your area of research is something which is in demand with the industry definitely i would say yes so you know i think see i think for every question i see everything very positively because this is a very as i say it's a broad spectrum antibiotic so uh, you know if you kind of you know are looking forward to um, you know quickly patch up your existing illness if i have to call it in terms of you know um, not having the level of skill um, that i should be desired that i feel that i should be having to compete in this industry right so i have to be a little ahead 
of my peer group so that you know i'm more eligible in the competitive market so my simple question would be yes go for it and uh, <clears throat> once you sign up for the i mean the program i mean within the first one and a half two months only you will realize the amount of learning that you will go through and uh, you will not regret for sure i don't think there's anybody who would regret and it's a worth the investment that you're going to make and you will get the returns but yes create a clear vision for yourself create a mind map create a vision on how do you see shaping up your career you know immediately within three months by say february march update your resume and apply and then carve out your you know niche area where you want to kind of get into absolutely um thanks chirantan thank you so much uh, you know it was wonderful um, talking to you today and getting your insights um, for all of the program and your experience of the program uh, for everybody who's not yet voted you know it's the uh, yes still open if you can uh, you know let us know your feedback about the webinar uh, we'll do more of these uh, sessions uh, perhaps we'll get chirantan again in one of the other sessions um to answer some of the questions that we could not uh, thank you so much and you can reach out uh, to vinodini and yochana their contact details are there on the page applications are open for the 16th cohort of uh, the triple it hyderabad talent sprint aiml program if you want to know more about the program itself you can go to www.talentsprint.com and get those details uh, thank you so much for joining us today uh, stay safe it's been lovely talking to you thanks again chirantan uh, lovely to, to talk to you thanks thanks uh, you know and wish you all the very best all of you so do well and yes i think we are part of the alumni group look forward to catching up with some of you again take care bye bye thanks bye bye